turn around and how many people and such. I think we can all go in for three rounds. It seems like a reasonable thing for the time that we've got. And I've got three uh, notes down home, so I will just do one at a time for them for you. Just because just that's how I roll. This one is called, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this one is called Zeistus to Foundation. The shock comes from the suddenness and the certainty when something <coughs> loved for years, always a constant, is suddenly destroyed so quickly, so succinctly, so completely. You think you did everything you could to stop this. You thought the entire world did everything in their power to make sure nothing like this would ever happen. And yet, here we are. You sit in shock from far too far away to make a difference and watch the new mindset of instant recollection to force down your throat the instantaneous news that is killing you to live through. Thousands of lifetimes and stories are lost in one unplanned, unintended act. Now face the loss that no one expected, the loss that we couldn't even imagine. Everything from the foundation to the Zeistus has collapsed as you wonder what within you has collapsed too. <sighs> Whether you want to worship or want to admire or want to remember, it's now gone forever. And your first battle is to cope with it, then to let the shock wear away until you can begin to grieve. I wrote that one so open-endedly mm -hmm. that as soon as I read it to my husband, who lost his father a few years ago, I'm like, that could have been about the death of a life. That, and and yeah. I intentionally did that very vague, but it was about you know thousands of lifetimes of the building of it. Anyway. And because Jane mentioned Venus, I thought I would do this one because I decided to write about Venus tomorrow. And I recently was called Quintessential Simple. They first sculpted me from marble, half-dressed and looking perplexed. And after their entire empire lay in ruin, I lay in a cave, broken and forgotten, until some fool found me and found a league of men to piece me together again. I was only partially dressed. And after they came to save me, they left my arms shattered. They left me nothing to defend myself with. You all adore me now, call me Venus, though others prefer to call me Aphrodite. They all think that I'm all about love, revealing myself half naked to men, and I become the quintessential symbol of love to you fools. But you keep forgetting, they never gave me my arms back to protect me from your wrath. I am now displayed, topless, and I cannot even cover myself or protect myself from your lurid eyes. You like me defenseless, forced to stay still as you exposed me and decided to call my nudity art. Tell me I'm wrong, that's what you men do. You look at, you, and you look at my arms, but what was in my left hand? The hand that was meant to write with such force. Well, I held an apple. Some may say that an apple a day keeps a doctor away, but some religious zealots may say I held fruit from the tree of knowledge. And so you know, with my arm holding that apple that you left shattered, know that I have a wisdom you will never understand. Go ahead, get religious, because I understand right from wrong long before you unearthed me and left me incomplete. You should realize that exposing them like this is wrong, and you know it. I have a knowledge that you may never comprehend as you look at my work and form and only think that even though I'm incomplete, you can still objectify me. You strip me of any power to fight back, but I still have a knowledge you will always lack. So try to put the pieces back together again, and you will still never comprehend what you have done, because you will never learn the whole truth. Last week 
anyway said that you can extrapolate this to a burning building or fire or anything. I thought I would close with a poem that talks about collapsing so buildings and lay in ruin. And it's from this little book there, and I wrote this good job a while ago. And it's called Jihadists and Astrophysics. I know gangs in Chicago shoot people on the streets. I know terrorists fly airplanes into buildings, set up bombs in basements. I know that jihadists chop off the heads of anyone who doesn't believe the way they do. I know that these high-rises I adore will come, will one day crumble and will be reduced to the dust from which they came. I know the sun one day will swell to touch the only earth we know, incinerating our only home. I know anything I say may only be a shout into a void. But I also know that I love you. And that love transcends the killings, the destruction. I have loved you since before I was born. And this is why I am so lucky that I found you. And there may be gunfire, and there may be explosions. Buildings may crumble. Our Earth's oceans won't save us from our red giant sun. But what I have for you, this love I have for you, this love transcends all. It has existed. It does exist. It will always exist. You may believe there are too many things we need to save ourselves from, but we have one constant we cannot forget. My love for you. It has existed. It does exist. And it will always exist. My love for you will outlast the beheadings, will outlast and rise above the explosions, transcend the destruction. My love for you transcends the jihadists. It transcends astrophysics. It transcends the earth, the stars. It transcends the elements that make you and I, that make the universe itself. My love for you will always transcend. Love always exists, and my hand was on his leg, and we just looked over at each other and smiled. I didn't even realize that I happened to be reading something that said that same kind of theme. But now we're for round two, and I think his buddy sidekick is joining him. Please give it up for Senior World Poet himself. Tom. <laughs>